Hello everyone! My name is Aaron Christensen, this is Horror 101 with Dr. AC, and this is Scarathon 2023, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. We are right at the tail end of October. Now is the time to make your contributions. The link to donate is below in the description. And tonight we are going to be talking about Terrifier and Terrifier 2. That's right, it's the, the lone double feature of Scarathon 2023. And here to chat with me about those two films from Damien Leone are Ryan Olson, Robin Graves, and Hi. Dan Kiggins. And again, oh, we are talking about not one, but two Terrifiers, which I, I was mentioning backstage. I did not realize how much time had transpired between those two because of that weird pandemic we had that just kind of made time seem very uh, elastic. Uh, but anyway, yes, welcome to the show, and let's uh, let's let's chat all things Art the Clown. You know, it's Thanks cool for that there us. were that there were six years between those two movies because the second movie felt like it took about six years to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an epic it's an epic offering. Uh, yeah, that's I, that's remember, a couple words for it. I did well. The thing is, I didn't uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see either of them to be honest until recently. Uh, but the first one I was kind of like, okay, scary clown movie, cool. And then Terrifier Two came out last year and made all that money, and we're like, oh, well, okay, well maybe this is worth. And then this is the this is the thing that really uh, kicked me over the edge was that I was at Flashback Weekend uh, this past summer, and they had a Terrifier uh, table and panel set up, and people were lined up to see the cast and the crew, and I was kind of like. Okay, this is clearly something that has caught on and uh, is worthy of examination discussion. So I'm glad, I'm glad I saw it, and I'm glad we get to chat about it tonight. Um, I, let me start with you, Ryan. Did you see the first film when it came out? Like, how did you come to art? Well, I was aware of it because I mean, you know, working at conventions and doing all that stuff, it was impossible to get away from it. Yeah. I mean, they were. That's what basically gave the movie its legs. But yeah. I did not see it right away. I actually, honestly, I wasn't that interested in it because, I mean, aside from the ones from outer space, I'm not a big fan of killer <laughs> clown stuff. It doesn't really do much for me. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. It just kind of looked like, yeah, it's another killer clown movie. You right. know, that's what I thought. And then uh, Jen got COVID and she watched it while she was, you know, laid up. And she was telling me that you should actually watch this. Yeah. It's a lot better than what we might've thought, you know? And I was like, okay, you know, I'll get around to it at some point, put it on the stack. And then the second film came out and everybody was going nuts about it. And one of my other buddies was like, dude, you gotta see this. And <laughs> it was playing at a local theater by us for five bucks. And we really try to go see, especially the indie stuff because mm -hmm. we want them to bring more to it. Cause we live in a really, we live out in the middle of nowhere. So if it's coming here, we want, we try to go see it. So. I, I had to watch the first one in order to see the second one. Yeah. So I watched that and I was really surprised at how much I did enjoy it. And then we went and saw the second film and yeah, I mean, it was really uh, neat to see the way that they really expanded the, the mythos and added so much of a dimension to it while really not telling us much at yeah. all too, at the same time. Yeah. That's that. You know. That is a great way of putting it. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of like the latter Saw films, in that we got just a little bit of story. So, and you knew you had to come back because they hadn't answered your questions for you. Yeah. But you know, but they they got in. They still put in all the the stuff that the Saw fans were coming to see in terms of the traps and things like that. Let me bounce down to you, Robin. Like, what was your uh, encounter with uh, Terrifier? The so first I one? saw I saw the first Terrifier pretty shortly after it came out. I want to say it was around 2017, somewhere in there. Uh, I saw it just mindlessly scrolling through Netflix at like three in the morning and was like, sure, why not? Creepy clown guy, let's go for it. And yeah, I remember uh, having sort of mixed feelings about it uh, because I got through it and was like, okay, throwback slasher. I get what you're doing. I see it. Uh, but I didn't, it, it didn't make me care about it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I thought it was an awesome movie to put on mute and have music play over for like a Halloween party. I thought it mm. was perfect for that kind of a vibe because you can look away from it 
and look back and something terrible is going to be happening. <laughs> and, it, and it's going to like, it's a good mood setter that way. And, you know, so it, it had that going. And by the time the second one came out, I was like, well, I got to see it. Cause like, why am I not going to, you know, watch it? Uh, Cause Lucy was in full swing by the time that had was coming around. So I had, I, I pretty much have to see every new movie that comes out <laughs> and it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> And when I sat down and watched it, granted, it took me two days. Um, I watched about an hour and a half and then was was worn out and had to go to sleep and then finished <laughs> it the following day. Uh, but it turned me all the way around. And I, and I like fully appreciate even the first Terrifier more than when I first saw it. Um, cool. and, and it's like you said, it, it's a really interesting thing how they like almost... Because the big criticism, apart from some of the stuff I'm sure we'll talk about later, uh, was that there wasn't anything to the movie. It's just like death, death, death for no real reason. And then the second one, they start planting all these little like lore crumbs and they don't do anything with it. But that's to keep you coming for Terrifier 3 2024. Yep. Which is coming. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty well my relationship with the thing. All right. And Dan. Um, I've heard the buzz on the street about the first one, but I never caught it. It's like, I've seen so many low budget clown movies. They're usually the lowest echelon of low budget films, your killjoys, your whatever. <laughs> and I mean, other than killer clowns from outer space or it or whatever, there's really not that many great ones. So it's like, I really was just in no big hurry to see it at all. But a friend of mine, he was dying to see uh, Terrifier 2 in the theater. And like Ryan, I don't like to see things out of order. So that day I watched Terrifier 1 and then went to the theater and saw Terrifier 2, which was a horrible idea. Just terrible, <laughs> terrible. <idea. laughs> the first one, I, there just wasn't very much to it. It's a bit of, kind of a generic horror film. Very little story. Amazing effects. I mean, I'm not going to belittle anything like Obviously, he's seen a lot of horror films. He's done a lot of stuff. I'm not going to totally crap on his parade, but it just was your average film with a really good makeup effects. And you could yeah. tell he's a better makeup effects artist than he is a director, in my opinion. Um, and then to see, then to go see it in the theater that same day, it was a slog. Like <laughs> I, I, I looked at my my watch like constantly. The rule is if you look at it twice bad movie. I <laughs> stared at my watch for like the last half hour of this movie. And <laughs> that's just how it was. But for you, Aaron, I did watch this again because I love Wow. It. Oh, you that's know? love. Yeah. But what I did this time was I watched it in reverse order. So okay. I watched Terrifier uh, 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 2 and then I watched or no. Yeah. Yeah. And it made me respect the first one a whole lot more. I thought there were scarier elements. I think I was harder on it than I should have. And I think it was just so much of the crappiness of the second one made me respect the first one a little bit more. And, and like, it's a lean 80 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, exactly. Yeah. And it's like I almost enjoyed the vagueness of no story or not knowing anything or whatever. That played well for this. And then, like you're saying, they start to – explain things away but just they do awful job doing it, it just it's like you should have just left it alone <laughs> i again had not really like dan said i really haven't uh, i don't get too jazzed by killer clown movies uh it just struck me that dan and ryan were both on the killer clowns matter space panel from earlier this year so go check right. that out as yeah, well that one, <laughs> a lot of fun uh, yeah. but this but this one I wasn't really interested, but then it's kind of was taking on this, this uh, pop culture presence. And then when, when I hear that a slasher is over two hours long, I'm kind of like, what are you even talking about? Like, I don't, I, has there ever been a slasher that is over two hours long? I just, I just can't imagine. Terrifier too. Yeah, exactly. That's the, it's, the, it's the single, it's the single, which I'm kind of like, you know, if you're Damien Leone, and you're going, I want to set my movie apart. I think that that's part of it uh, is that he was going, I'm going to go further with this. I'm going to take longer with this. I'm going to create, but it's not like, it's not the kill fest that I was expecting. I was expecting a body count in like 
you know, the, the, the twenties and thirties, because what else are you going to do for two and a half hours? If not kill a whole bunch of people in a slasher movie. And that's, and, and surprisingly that isn't what happens. There's a lot of what you said, there's kind of like dream sequences and there's a lot of like, you know, character building. And I was kind of like, huh, it's, it's, it's like you're trying to make a regular movie <laughs> when, when really you want to make a slasher. I just, I thought that was really fascinating. I didn't dislike either film. I, I do like the first one more uh, because I like it's kind of, uh, it's straight ahead approach. It's not trying to be anything other than a slasher film. That's a throwback. It's got a, I think it has a great, it does a great job of setting up an iconic character like it, there's a real um, there's a real quality to art in that he doesn't speak. He's got those great big teeth and the blacked out gums. He's got his little hat. And I just I like the fact that it's very simple and direct. And when you get into the second one and there is kind of this, I think whenever I'll throw up the spoilers banner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes in, folks. It's We're there. Record, We're there. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit. So, you know, when you blow the guy's head off at the end of the movie, <laughs> I'm kind of like, you know, I, I it may it makes me annoyed when that killer comes back. You know, even like even Jason like did until like Manhattan when he got friggin melted, I was kind of like, okay, that you can't come back from that. And he didn't until like goes to hell, which was just a completely different, you know, multiverse. Yeah. He was a worm then. Yeah. 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 So, so I think like that was the thing that bummed me. I'm kind of like, Oh man, you really killed him good there. And now for him to come back, which I already knew that he was going to come back because terrifier two already existed. I'm kind of like, ah, shoot. Okay, so you're gonna not play fair, and you're gonna you're gonna give me some weird supernatural creature who I didn't think art was in the first place. But I do like I like the first one, and I like I like the I like the ambition of the second one. Yeah, it's it's funny the way because when I was thinking about this, like in preparation for coming on here. Uh, because I think I like the second one more than the first one. I think the first uh, one uh, gets its point across a lot better, whatever point there is. Um, <laughs> I think it, but what? it's they're they're both like more confident than the other in different ways. Yes, um, like because my instinct was to call the second one a little more confident because they sort of go for some bigger choices. But I think the first one, like, really confidently knows what it's about, and it doesn't really put on any airs to try and be like anything beyond like remember the eighties, let's throw some blood all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I think they both have like a really cool merit in that way. And to sort of come back to your point about uh, creating like an iconic character, I, I think they like did that so much better than I think any like modern throwbacky slasher thing like they beat out victor crowley for well, sure i was gonna say that's the last one i can kind of refer back to is adam green and and it was really adam green selling victor crowley to us yeah that made us go okay here's our new horror icon i don't know how iconic he is but he's what we got and it because i think because i like hatchet a lot but i felt like they were like really shoving victor crowley down our throats like that's here's I mean. your new freddy like this is what you're gonna get and so I think art like really effortlessly slid in there and was like, it's a striking design yep. uh, The Oh, his name has left me, but the actor who plays art uh, is David Howard Thornton. David Howard Thornton is a classically trained mime. He yeah. is a clown and that like, see, I'm also not like I'm a big circus guy, but I'm not a big killer clown guy. And the like actual clownishness that he brings to that character totally puts it into this whole other place that you don't see murder juggalos go to a lot. Yeah. I, th I think that the mime aspect of it is what really uh, I enjoyed the most as far as the character itself. I mean, I think like you said, he looks really cool and he's very creepy looking, but I do like the mime aspect of it more so than the clown. I think that that just adds such another level of creep factor and just, I don't know, it's just something about it that, you know, he just lets his movements and things that he does. I mean, 
there's a lot of stuff about the art character that I think is cool and unique and which is what made me really enjoy it. You know, we've, ne we've never seen a character like that, really. I mean, no. you know, like no. we either have the monolith of Jason or we have the wisecracker of Freddie and yeah. all the other killers kind of fall somewhere in between. And art is so distinctly his own thing. Uh, again, I, you know, it's, I'm not a huge franchise guy. So I'm kind of like, you know, it would have been nice to have a one and done, but it's almost inevitable that you, when you have a character that that is that memorable, you're going to like, well, yeah. we got to find a way to bring him back. And yeah, and it's did. the story of slasher movies playing exactly. out all yep. over again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing that I really like about art though, too, that makes him stand out is the fact that unlike your classic slasher killers that have like the Freddy glove or the machete or the chainsaw art does whatever it takes to kill someone. He yeah. will use whatever's there. He's got his, bag of you never know what the heck he's gonna pull out of there his and i mean especially i know spoilers the fact when he all of a sudden just out of nowhere pulls out the gun i mean yep. that was like holy cow because you wouldn't expect that ever to happen where he just you know you think he's totally down for the count and then he just goes yeah you know what i'm tired of playing games pow <laughs> got the i yopper. mean that was yeah. like exactly that was just total like wow that was a great like i mean for guys like us that are or people like us not just guys that have seen so much of these types of movies and things like that. That yeah. was just a cool little like left field, you know, curveball that all of a sudden it was just like, whoa, I mean, all bets are off. He's yeah. gonna do whatever he whatever it takes. And I really thought that was cool. Yeah, people cry foul about guns and slasher movies a lot. And for me, it's always like incredibly effective. I guess because I'm like nervous about guns or something, like I'm a young person in America or whatever. But like just in scream oh here's a different spoiler i guess in scream <laughs> six like when he whips out the shotgun in the bodega in terrifier when he just yanks that little like 38 out and goes for it or like the gun scene in house of the devil they always come out of left field yep um and it's like the instant finality of a gunshot is just like bone chilling it really really gets to me so it's, i yeah, love to see it it's one of the only things that really makes me go Ugh, anymore well it's funny that like the the it's so verboten it's like you know a martial artist you know shouldn't ever have a gun on him and so when he when a martial artist pull it because i've seen that in several films where like you know guys doing martial arts and he's kablam you know it's like <laughs> yeah. it kind of you're like shoot yeah, Jones, yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah, lost pulls, art he, yep so, uh, and and one thing I, I will say that I really like about Terrifier 2 is the addition of the pale little girl, like Art's little fantasy yeah. girlfriend. Totally agree. She was the best, she's the creepiest part of it for me. You know? oh, and, the the and kids she, at all the horror events here have started dressing up like her. It's awesome. When she shows well, up that's... in the laundromat, I was like, what, what's even happening? And, and then that whole laundromat scene is kind of hilarious. Uh but but I, I love the fact that she shows up and she's kind of but then she also takes on like these weird mystical powers like she's impersonating Jonathan on the phone. I'm like, wait, what? Or is it her art? I forget who which she's one the of them at the end also talking. Yeah. 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 Like the fact that she has powers to do things. I'm like, wait, aren't you just like a figment of art's imagination? Like she's like, not. Yeah. I, yeah. I got thoughts about that. I got some theories. Let's let's hear yeah. your thoughts and theories, both of you. Yeah, there's there's something I'd like to add when you're done, Robin. Yeah, so I, and I think we're probably going to end up saying the same thing. But I think that both art and that little clown girl, whatever, I think they're both like tulpas. I think that's going to be what the the third movie sort of starts to get into. And for those of you who didn't spend too much time in the New Age book <laughs> section, uh, a tulpa is like a thought form manifest. Ah. So, and that's like all the stuff with the dad where he was drawing art and like, right. he had all these visions or whatever. Yep. Uh, I think there's something he tapped into there and this character, he just drew for whatever, uh, got too much energy put into it and found itself poked into the material world. And then with all the insanity art brings, what's to say he doesn't create his own little tulpa um okay so yeah, that's that's sort of where i'm coming from with that ryan well to start with the character was actually inspired 
by a Damien Leon going to conventions and seeing women and girls dressed up like art. And that inspired him. He's like, he actually says on one of the behind the scenes features, uh, talks about how I saw that happening and I had to get ahead of it. He said, so that's where I created her because he was originally good. Well, he was originally going to have a figure character thing, which technically she's a demon. At least that's when you watch it. Uh, I watched just watched it again and have the subtitles on and they Ooh, list they her as a demon, demon. Yeah. Oh, when she, when she has interaction with them. And also you have to remember that uh, Sienna starts and Jonathan both start to see her too. So it's not right. just art that's right. seeing her. She's manifesting where others are starting to encounter her. So there's some kind of something more to her. Maybe she's the one that the flash of light that we see at the end of the first film, when he comes back, maybe she had some, you know, her demonic influence somehow is what resurrects him and makes him like her, you know, totem or whatever you want to call it. But that's kind of, you know, I guess where they're going with that as far as that she's supposed to be a, some kind of a demonic entity, but the whole genesis of it was he was originally going to have a character that was going to be a small, like he said, he wanted to be like the devil popping up on our shoulder. <laughs> but then funny, when he yeah. saw the people dressing up at the <laughs> conventions that inspired him and he was like, I got to try this and, and do this, this will be even better. So, which I mean, obviously was a fantastic choice because right, you're right. It is, it is an incredible, uh, character you know totally yeah. i love i love the fact that yeah the, the the there is a mythology starting to stir and yes yeah um we have our character of uh, uh sienna who's played by lauren lavera but she's she her father is has written you know has done these drawings and things like that and and he kind of like lost his mind you know and that, i'm wondering if that's going to factor in as well if there's if, if so, that created some kind of insanity for him you would think that that's going to be the case i mean you, they're not going to sprinkle all those breadcrumbs and you know stop the movie to have uh her friend tell her boyfriend about what happened without it being right. something more significant you know the only thing that i'm hoping and this is just me thinking weird the second time i watch it is just don't turn it into a you know, Luke, I am your father thing where art ends up somehow being, you know, connected because they said he, the car crashed into a electricity pole and all this stuff was happening while he was burning up. It's like, I just hope they don't <laughs> try to do something like that. But, you know, Art's I mean, that's Vader, just me yeah. being, yeah, that's just me being a nerdy you know, fan. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, let's talk really quick about the final girls, both in the first one and the second one, like Victoria. Uh, who's played by Samantha <laughs> Scafidi. Uh, I think she's an interesting final girl. And we also have uh, her, well, I mean, we're going to talk about the scene for Terrifier, where her friend is basically tied up, inverted, and is sawed down the middle. Which, you know, to your point, Dan, like, I think the effects are really, and, and Damien Leone started off as a makeup effects. Like that's what led him into being a director uh, and was looking for opportunities in which he could showcase uh, his effects. Rarely. And, and that is one where he, I, I mean, that's one of those obvious choices where it's how can I get the biggest reaction out of the audience? You know, what could I do? And of course you have the, the accusation of misogyny because the violence is visited upon women and in a very sensitive female uh, area. Uh, I'm curious to hear what some people's thoughts are that I have read interviews with Damien and, you know, like he has an answer for, uh, for that. And, you know, like it, it's just coming from a place of the slasher history as opposed to anything that I think he's working out. Uh, but anyway, th any thoughts on first, the first one, well, I think his, uh, I think I read that same answer and it's weirdly defensive. Mm. Um, well, I think because he's being attacked. So that yeah. Yeah. And sense. like, not to say I wouldn't be the same way if somebody came at me crossways that way, but I don't think it did him any favors to answer sure. that way. Um, because I also, when I saw it, um, I was like, whoa, that was intense. Not yeah. whoa, this guy's sick, but whoa, that was intense. Yeah, and and then I remember like shortly after the the internet like popping off about it and having all sorts of istorphobic you know claims about it, 
and I sat and chewed on it for a while because, like, you know, the affected people, uh, their thoughts are going to matter more than somebody who's unaffected at the end of the sure. day. Yep. But I couldn't help but feel like if this movie came out in 1986, seven, uh, nobody would have said anything like that. I, I think it would be like a beloved slasher cult hit that you have to go to the back of the video store for, right. but it would be, it would be like pieces. Like, yeah, uh, it would have a huge cult following and nobody would be like, this is a troubling look at this man's opinion. I, well, and that, I think that's, that's the, what he's going for is a cinematic cinematic shock. Yeah. He is he is trying to have an effect on you. Yeah. But I don't I don't it doesn't feel reflective of someone who's trying to make a comment about women. Uh, it feels like somebody who's who's going what would resonate with an audience and get them to scream and and jump out yeah. of their chairs. You know what would be like fucked up if we showed on screen? That's what yeah, the thought that's, is. That's what, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Absolutely. 100%. I was just going to say and the second one he's an equal opportunity. That's what yeah. I was just going to say. Dude, yeah. because you know, you see what happens to to the boyfriend. I mean, that you know, was, he that he, was he gets a that funny nod to that too. <laughs> I remember when that happened, I was like, "Oh, oh, Somebody <laughs> paid attention to the comments because that was so good. I, I live for a good dick mangling, so <laughs> that like that was cherry. <laughs> However, we uh, once again the women get the worst of it in Terrifier Two. I mean that, uh, and I again I, I I don't know if it's as effective, but it's certainly another great moment where Art just goes to town on uh, Sienna's friend. And you're oh. like, holy mackerel. You yeah, know, that's it's like, how, like a solid way five rough. minutes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how far are you going to go here? But I feel like it's that gleeful excess that you can't take seriously. Right. I, mean, I just don't, I just can't see that as being, I'm making a comment about how I feel about women. It's like, yeah. like you said, Robin, it's like, how far can I go? You know, it'd be even more messed up as if we did this. Oh, you know, it'd be even more messed up as if we did this. Well, and that to me, that I think we're talking about the bleach and salt scene in the house, right? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. There's because there's a lot of viscera to go around in that one. But what I thought in watching that scene where it's that gleeful abandon and it goes on for so long and it's yep. so brutal is like, I thought that was Damien Leon kind of being like, all right, okay, I won't touch the. <laughs> But <laughs> nobody's going to complain if I do normal slasher movie stuff for a really long time. From what I heard, that scene, they'd broken for COVID. So he just had started that and then had months just to add yep. holes in their back. And oh, that, that was quarantine and baggage. Yeah. Going and going and yeah. going. But I, get, I definitely get the sense that this is Damien Leone's Terrifier 2. And this is absolutely the movie he wanted to make. The length, the... Uh, if we were going to talk trims, I feel like sometimes the character attempts at character building go on a little longer than necessary. We don't need to know these characters that well, especially when we're just going to kill them. And it's not necessarily a surprise that they get killed. Uh, I think that would be my one, my, like, I don't need to spend as much time with uh, the friend in the car and I don't need to spend as much time in the, in the club you know, things that aren't necessarily moving the plot forward. Those are uh, the exact two pieces I was going to bring up. That club scene, you could have cut a lot out of there. We just yeah. need to see them get there, have a couple drinks, find out that she's been drugged. Yeah. Move on. Maybe get the phone call with the mom. That was a good piece. And then like the, the scene in the... Girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. With the mom. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then that scene in the car, like you could have cut some of those key bumps out. Like we didn't need to stay like, we get it. They're doing blow, like move along, move along. <laughs> On the one hand, I, I can't fault him for trying to, but it, he also edited the film, you know? So it's kind of like, yep. And that's always a risk when you have somebody who writes, directs and edits a little too like, close to the, to the, and, project. and yeah. does the makeup effects. So he's kind of like, well, I'm going to show all the good stuff and I'm going to tell all the stuff I want to tell. And, 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 you know, as opposed to having somebody on the outside who's maybe offering uh, a different perspective. But again, I don't think that 
it, I, again, I'm stunned by the fact that there's a two a, a two plus hour slasher movie in existence. You know, like that to me is kind of incredible, and so I kind of love it in that regard. I'm like, okay, it it is it is the only one out there, and and, and I was I thought this was a more beloved film uh, by the populace because it made a lot of money. But, you know, if you read the, the the reviews on IMDb, like a lot of people are mad at this movie. <laughs> like a lot of people are like three stars, two stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, OK, I, I thought it was I thought I thought the general populace enjoyed it more than it did. But it seems like it is a little bit more of a cult following. And that's OK. I'm totally fine with that. I liked it more the second time around, to be honest. Really? I really yeah. I enjoyed it the first time I did. But uh I mean, I just watched it again earlier today to get prepared for this. So it was really fresh in my mind. And I, I liked it more. I really actually like the world building and the expanding of the mythos and the creation of a kind of like you have this ultimate evil in art. And now you are having this, is she going to possibly be an ultimate good in what's going on with Sienna and Jonathan? And then you got, you know, the, the weird, you know, the final girl of the first one turns out to be this, you know, <laughs> maniac creature the thing half. too. That's kind of like, you know, on the art side of things and yeah. you know, that like, I don't know. I, for me, I like the additions of it and trying to flesh it out. And I like the fact too, that he's still keeping it very vague because part of art's power, like with most of these, you know, killers like that is not knowing as much about them. Once you give yeah. them too much backstory, it does take away a lot from the character. Mm -hmm. So I like how he's giving you more, but at the same time still holding his cards closer to his chest, which to me makes, or at least for me, you want to come back for more and see what's going to happen next. Yeah, you can't fully demystify the devil. You got to like right. let there be some some unexplained in there. And I think what really keeps me like, what I think is so special about it is it feels like Tom and Jerry with like, buckets and buckets of blood like it's so gleeful and it's so violent and it's so insane that ap apart from having to sit for two hours and like contend with the film like i'm fine with the nonsense like sure it opens some threads and then close them and then like just get me to the next one it's fine whatever like because it's just such unbridled insanity that like it's it's a lot of fun to behold i talked uh, talked on an earlier episode about kind of walking in with a prejudice based on running time where i'm just kind of like i'm like now come on what are you going to do for 137 minutes really uh i think i think like you i think i would appreciate this both of them on uh more so on a second viewing because then it's not about the film you're you're wanting. It's about appreciating the film you have. And I think to your really? point, Ryan, is that, you know, I, I like the fact that there are all these like little things that he's dropping in to make what was just another slasher film something else. Like exactly. he's 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 dr he's taking his car and going into a completely different lane. And I'm like, he wasn't imagining that he was going to go into that lane before, but he's like. Oh shit! I got a hit on my hands. How can I not do just more of the same? And I, exactly. I have to, I have to, you know, tip my hat to that. I like the fact that he's not just doing a, a traditional art sequel. Well, from yeah. the, the film, this is all based on that All Hallows Eve or the short they all did. It. He said in that that he threw everything at the wall: the devil, witches, demons, <laughs> this aliens, and, yeah. <laughs> and that was the only thing yep. that really stuck. So he's like. Okay, you know what I mean? Like, here we go. It wasn't like some passion project of him just for, to get art to the forefront or anything right. like that. And I mean, I don't want to go back too far, but from All Hall's Eve, I think it, if you're to add that into the whole thing, then art is definitely more in the demon realm because they're kind of going to hell and doing all these other stuff. It's kind of like the infernos with that whole thing. So, yeah. But they don't really, doesn't seem like they tried to connect that very hard to Terrifier 1. And then mm -hmm, they seem mm -hmm. to be bringing that back in Terrifier 2. Which most people, I don't think, had even heard of All Hallows Eve to begin with. Right. I yeah. hadn't yeah. until after I yeah. saw Terrifier. Yeah. And I, like, look for anthologies. Look, there's, yeah. like, there's one instance where, like, in All Hallows Eve, like, 
Art has the deadlights. His eyes are like glowing and doing whatever. Yeah. And it's one of the creepiest parts in that whole film. Yeah. But um, I mean, I almost in the first one, it does take away from that demon aspect when he's putting on the makeup and all these other things that like humanizes yeah. him. So it kind of takes you out of that realm to think that this is a normal human being, a la Michael Myers in the first one, or something like that, or yeah, Jason yeah, yeah. before, before you know, part six or something. Pre Tommy Jarvis, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make the first one for thirty five thousand dollars is yep. ridiculous. That's yep. that is yeah. amazing yeah, for thirty five thousand dollars. Like it or not, and the second one for a quarter mil. I've worked on films that had. Uh, five times that budget. I would hate to see Damien Leone just become the terrifier oh. guy. I would like him to have an opportunity to tell other stories, even if even if art continues to expand out and we get a bigger mythos around it. Oh, I would love to see what else he has to tell us. Uh, so, because uh, I was thinking about the the guy who did the Purge, like he kind of got trapped in the Purge. You know, like it's yeah. all he does is the purge movies because that's what they'll give him to do. And Leone's still low enough on the food chain that he can make other decisions. He's not going to have Hollywood dictating to him what he has to yeah. do. Or he could use his clout and say, Yeah, I'll give you Terrifier three if you let me do X. Because I because yeah. I was thinking like Adam Green, you know, even Adam Adam Green tried to do some other things. He did Frozen, he did Spiral. And I mean, he ended up coming. Whoa! Coming I didn't back. know Adam Green was on Spiral. That's crazy. Yeah, he co-directed that with uh, our our lead actor, uh, uh, which is terrific. He's on shows and stuff like that. Frozen, yeah, great right too. Yeah, Holliston, you know, things like that. So I mean, he's done okay. other things. So, uh, but I think you know, he kind of, I think he'll be remembered as the hatchet guy, but he at least is trying other things. But yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about. I've read one interview with Damon Leone, uh, and it was sorry about that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I like just, I like we, the mood lighting. That was fun. Well, on that note, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh again, this is this is Scarathon 2023, benefiting the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. The link to donate is below in the comments for this video. Please make a contribution. This is a cause that's very important to myself and my guests. Uh it was great having everybody on tonight. Thank you so much. Ryan, thanks for coming in at the last minute. Thanks for having me. Appreciate joining it. us for Scarathon 2023. And until next time, keep searching, keep exploring, and keep sharing the scare. <laughs>